from Leibniz Monadology. If we wish to call soul everything that has perceptions and appetites in the general sense I've just explained, then all simple substances or created monads can be called souls. But since sensation is something more than a simple perception, I think that the general name of monad and entelechy is sufficient for simple substances which only have perceptions, and that we should only call those substances souls where perception is more distinct and accompanied by memory. Now, in this passage of the text, he's just described the word entelechy, which evidently he invented based off of some Greek vocabulary. And he says we could use the word soul to refer to any old monad. That would be not too bad, but it's not very precise. It's better to use the word soul to refer to some monads in particular, and to use the word monad, or this new technical term, entelechy, to refer to monads as such. Now, every, every object has a monad. My stapler has a monad. My teacup has a monad. This here pen has a monad. Every object has a monad, and a monad is a simple substance, that is to say a substance without parts, and it is a mental substance. It has perception. Yes, my pen has perception. My teacup has perception. My stapler has perception. The stapler perceives the world not as well as I do, and that's largely the point. Every monad has some level of perception, but it's better to use the word soul for a particular kind of monad, using this slightly more precise terminology. Every soul is a monad. Every thing has a monad. Every object has a monad, all the way down to my, my teacup. But not every monad is a soul. Only those higher monads are souls. And what do the monads that are souls have that uh, the other souls uh, that the other monads don't have? Well, the teacup has some small level of perception. For we experience within ourselves a state in which we remember nothing and have no distinct perceptions. This is similar to when we faint or when we are overwhelmed by a deep, dreamless sleep. In this state, the soul does not differ sensibly from a simple monad, but since this state does not last and since the soul emerges from it, our soul is something more. The experience we have when we are very fast asleep, no dreams, the experience we have when we have almost no perception is like the experience of the teacup. There's some level of perception. It's a pretty low level. A soul is a monad that has more than just that. We experience that, but we don't stay there because we are souls, not just monads. We emerge from that and go on to more distinct perception accompanied by memory. That's what a soul is. It's a monad that is more distinct perception accompanied by memory. Now, what about souls? Where, uh, which monads are souls, exactly? Um, we, we've given this description, uh, maybe a definition of what it is to be a monad that is also a soul. It's to be a monad that has more distinct perception and that also has memory. But who or what has that kind of soul? Let's see. Memory provides a kind of sequence in souls which imitates reason, but which must be distinguished from it. We observe that when animals have the perception of something which strikes them, when they previously had a similar perception of that thing, then through a representation in their memory, they expect that which was attached to the thing in the preceding perception and are led to have sensations similar to those they had before. For example, if we show dogs a stick, they remember the pain that it caused them and they flee. So an animal, a dog or a horse, has a soul. Now this is uh, not a thing that should be terribly surprising. Uh, it's harder to think in terms of animal souls uh, than it used to be. Uh, I think we can blame the modern world for that. Modern philosophy we can blame Descartes in large part. But the Leibnizian way of thinking corresponding in this respect, as in some others, to the more traditional approach, the pre-modern approach corresponding to Aristotle and so on, the Leibnizian view is that animals have souls. The, uh, the Aristotelian view has some similarities to, to Leibniz here. Let's briefly review some Aristotle. In Aristotle, in his metaphysics, plants have souls. Dogs and horses have souls, and humans have souls. The plant soul has the power of uh, nutrition growth. It has the power of keeping uh, the plant alive, organizing the matter that's in the plant, and um, making the, the, the body of the plant take in nutrition and grow. And that's pretty much all it does. The power of perception is 
what an animal soul has, and uh, to some extent, at least with some animals, memory. Human soul also has reason. Leibniz is very similar to Aristotle, not entirely similar, because every monad has perception. Uh, and because monads go all the way down, even the teacup has a monad and some level of perception. But an animal monad is a soul. A dog or a horse has perception, but it's also distinct and has memory. So all souls are monads, but not all monads are souls. All, all monads have some level of perception. Not all monads have distinct perception with memory. Those are souls. And what has a soul? An animal. But also, you and I, but we have more. We also have reason. Now, we do have memory and perception. There is an animalistic aspect to us. Let's read about that. Men act like beasts insofar as the sequence of their perceptions results from the principle of memory alone. They resemble the empirical physicians who practice without theory. We are all mere empirics in three-fourths of our actions. So when we act according to mere perception, memory, and expectation based on memory, we're not doing anything specifically based on reason. We're um, acting according to the powers of a merely animalistic soul. We have souls that are meant for more. But the knowledge of eternal and necessary truths is what distinguishes us from simple animals and furnishes us with reason and the sciences by raising us to a knowledge of ourselves and of God. That is what we call the rational soul or mind in ourselves. All rational souls are souls, and all souls are monads. Not all monads are souls. The souls are the monads with more distinct perceptions and with memory. And not all souls are rational souls. Rational souls are souls that have not only distinct perceptions and memory, but also reason. The knowledge of eternal and necessary truths. The ability to do the sciences. The knowledge of ourselves and of God. Or if you use the word mind, as Leibniz suggests, this is what we call the rational soul or mind. Let's repeat that exercise in uh, those words. All minds are souls, but not vice versa. And all souls are monads, but not vice versa. All monads, even my teacup, have some level of perception. The souls are the monads that have perception that's more distinct, plus some power of memory. And the minds are those souls which have not only more distinct perceptions plus memory, but they also have reason. They have the ability to know eternal and necessary truths, to know ourselves and to know God. Those are minds. Those are the higher monads.